guys, welcome back to another TOEFL IBT video. Here we are, or podcast, of course. We're doing the integrated writing. It's not just a note taken anymore. I got myself a full essay to show you, but I'm going to walk you through the entire process because I know a lot of you and seeing the podcast plays and stuff, I realized that some of you may be struggling with this aspect, especially when perhaps during the lecture, there aren't that many opposing ideas and there are more completely different ideas, you know, from what the lecturer said compared to what the article actually read. So this is extremely problematic. I completely understand. And so that's what I'm going to be diving into today. So I'm really excited about this, guys. We are going to coin it while I'm sharing this, the Choco House. So as you guys are looking on the screen, you got Chaco House on the left and the right. The articles on the right, what my student had, wrote, had written me is on the left. For those of you who are listening to me, bear with me, okay? Because we're going to be going through a lot of the sexy details. So I'm gonna put myself right there, front and centered. And what we have here is pretty good. You guys see a lot of different templates online, I know. Um, for example, I know some of you would use the same old template for all your TOEFL integrated tasks saying, okay, the lecture and the reading passage is about this. The reading goes blah, 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 and the lecture is opposed to these ideas. And then it's the finishing conclusion. Listen, if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. I'm not detouring you away from that specific way of doing things. Perhaps the easier, the better. I don't know if TOEFL is aware of this specific website that has all of this redundant information and people are taking the same paragraph over and over. But if you could come up with a more formidable introduction, hey, best of luck to you. So that's what we got over here on the left. So for those of you listening, Let's look at what the Chaco House is, okay? Now, on the right-hand side, I do, and I really hope that you guys uh, tune into my blog, thearseniobuckshow.com. Please do, because it's going to be very difficult for me to literally recite this entire thing out loud, right? And then on the left is my wonderful student's little essay. So what I wanted to do is see what ideas she got from the reading that she included in the writing, right? So you got... Of course, the first paragraph, and then we have the details. Okay, one theory, second theory, third theory. Okay, the first point, another point, additionally, or you could put finally, that's how you're going to label out these paragraphs. One, one, two, two, three, three. That's how it goes, right? So what we got here, okay, is the basics. I'm just going to recite the first paragraph out loud, okay? And then I'm going to go over to the left-hand side. Now, for those of you who are listening to me on podcast and want to see this on video, YouTube, or my Facebook page, all the links are in the description, okay? Because there's a lot of things, uh, there's a lot of corrections that you might want to check out that she had written down and that I had marked off. This could be very, very good for a lot of you out there. Now, if you're viewing my blog, you're going to see that also on there too. That's right. I mean, for the first time ever, I, I had written out everything and we're going to check it from head to toe. So with that being said, let's get into this nice little paragraph. The settlements of New Mexico's Chaco Canyon and American Southwest were notable for their massive stone buildings known as great houses, containing hundreds of rooms and standing three or four stories high since the 12th century AD. Archaeologists have been trying to determine how these buildings were used, but still have not come up with the university, I'm sorry, a universally agreed upon explanation. However, there are three competing theories that provide plausible explanations. That's what you're going to get for the first paragraph in the reading, right? So what my student had written, and I'm just going to compare and contrast here before we do the actual listening, I take notes and I compare it with what she had written down. She said in the lecture, now she could have started off with in the reading, could have been a little bit better, but no problem, no problem, not, not a little bit better, but it depends how she goes about this. So in the lecture, the professor made several points about the Chaco Great Houses, fantastic. Now the introduction could be, hey, well this specific reading and lecture is about Chaco Great Houses. So we could just make that the overall topic. No problem, no problem at all. She said, the teacher argues that all the theories related to the use of these architectures are not convincing. Good. However, the author of the passage contends that these theories are competing 
and can provide plausible explanations. The professor's lecture casts doubt on the reading by using several points that are contrary to the use of the space in the, ch I'm sorry, Chaco great houses. She put chasse or chase or chassis or whatever it may be. But nonetheless, do you guys get what I'm saying? So by looking at this paragraph, it's kind of funny because while I was reading it, I was like, dude, this could be an exercise that I've seen in so many books like, okay, which sentence should be first, which sentence should be second, which sentence should be third, which sentence should be fourth, right? Right, because I mean, very easily, we could just like move those sentences around and it could flow a little bit more. It, fe it seems that it's just a little bit backwards, but nonetheless, it's okay. Nonetheless, it's okay. So again, in the lecture, she kind of reiterated that in the last sentence, the professor's lecture casts doubt. You already said that before, right? The teacher argues that all theories, okay. However, the author of the passage contends these, okay. So it's kind of like a little bit of reiteration going on there. So we could just leave it about three sentences, okay? Just give that opening remark and then just use the reading and then the professor. Does that make sense? So we could just minus a couple of these sentences. Meaning, if we put that at the beginning, the reading in the lecture is about the Chaco Great Houses. Okay, then we're gonna start off with the reading first. The author of the passage contends that these specific, we would have to reword it just a little bit, right? And then you would put, however, the professor lecture casts doubt, boom, done. There you go. There you go, done, done. You guys get what I'm saying? So, huh, I hope that makes a lot of sense. I know that'll make all the sense in the world to all of you out there right now. Now, this is gonna be a little tough because there's gonna be a lot of things I'm gonna have to cover in a short amount of time. But the first theory states that, okay, what's the first theory? Now let's get over here. Structures were residential and held hundreds of people. Okay, that could be a little supportive theory, let's see. Supporters of this theory look too similar. Look too similar architectural structures in more recent Southwest societies. Probably they meant to say look into similar architectural. There we go, look into. Okay, so we're missing a preposition there. Nonetheless, let's keep going. One structure in particular that is strikingly similar to the Chaco buildings is the apartment building in Taos, New Mexico. Okay, which has, which has housed several people of the centuries. Okay, well, there it is. Well, that's what we have here. So what we have to do in the listening is look, listen for conflicting information, which I'm gonna make notes about on the left-hand side, if you guys are watching me, right? What she had written, she said the first point that the instructor uses to cast doubt on the reading is that the, even though this architecture looks from the outside like apartment buildings, comma, the inside space looks the opposite. According to the professor, if these architectures were constructed with a residential purpose, they should, have, they should have had more fireplaces where the families would have been able to cook. Furthermore, the professor argues that the Chaco Great House will only have the space of fireplaces for 10 families. This point, this point differs from the reading in that reading states that the Chaco architectures can hold hundreds of people. Is that right? I'm looking at this right now. Yes, she's right. Yep, and held hundreds of people. You still have to listen, but that's formidable. That's it right there. Okay, yes, I had to make some corrections. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, have had more fireplaces. Okay, a little present perfect. It's all good. Okay, I had to put, even though this, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, even though this architecture, they should, instead of just should, House will, not house it will. You cannot use it along with Chaco Great. That means you're saying Chaco Great, Chaco Great. And then can held, no, can hold. I love it. I love it. This is, the, that was really good. Let me just see the first point. Excellent. If we look at now, what I want you guys to really pay close attention to is the link or, or are the linkers, right? So you got the first point, according to the professor. Furthermore, the point differs. That's what I'm reading right now. 
Yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. So this is solid. This is solid. I'm looking at the, the linkers because there are so many different ways you could open up that argument. The reading had stated that, past perfect. Uh, the professor also noted that, the professor claimed, got to use a, a variety of these throughout your specific writing. Don't use the same thing. Do not recycle, okay? But that was very solid. Very happy about that. So here we go. Let's go into the second theory. <sighs> All right. Argues that the Chaco structures were used as food storage facilities. Okay, so that's point number one. Bam. Food storage. Since one of the main crops of the Chaco people were grain, well, okay, were grain maize, it could be stored. Okay, one of the grain, well, I'm sorry, one of the main crops. Okay, just in case I highlight it. It could be stored for an extended time, extended period of time without spoiling. The large size of the structures made them ideal for storing large crops of graze. Okay, large size structures, large crops of maize. Okay, let's look at what she said. Another point, <clears throat> excuse me again, that the professor uses to cast doubt. Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure I had read that already, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, yes, the last sentence of the introductory paragraph. So we're going to have to switch that up. That's something I'll be talking to her about, right? So on the reading is about the use of Chaco Great Houses as storage. The teacher claims, okay, or professor, I don't know, we're losing, using a lot of different nouns, uh, that if it will be used as a storage construction, it would have... If it were used, okay, so what we're going to do here is put if it were used, okay, if it were used as a storage construction, you can't say if it was used, no, if it were used, okay, because we're talking about the Chaco Great Houses and their storages, right? So the teacher claims that if it were used as a storage construction, it would have needed, good, 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 excellent conditional. It would have needed large, I'm sorry, it would have needed large container spaces. Here, the large size of the structures made it ideal for storing large sizes. of, okay. However, the reading states that the ideal size of these architectures would have made it perfect places to store the grain maize. Huh, okay, we're gonna have to listen to check that out just a little bit. Okay, because I believe that there may be a little bit of conflicting information there. Let's see. Let's see what they say, right? Okay, so that was three sentences. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And the last point a third theory proposes that the houses were used as ceremonial gathering places. All righty. Archaeologists discovered a large mound of old material near one house called Pueblo Alto. This sounds so familiar, seriously. I'm reading this right now, and it sounds like a reading passage out of TOEFL ITP, one of the new tests that were just taken this year. Interesting. I wonder if they recycle these. Further inspection of the mound. Do I remember the word mound. That's why. Interesting. Further inspection of the mound revealed deposits containing several broken pots. Okay. Broken pots in the mounds. Fantastic. Documented in other Native American cultures that during special ceremonies, they ate a festive and discarded the pots. Okay, not like the Romans, they just do it on the ground. That the meal had been prepared or served with. Fantastic. Because of these documented ceremonies, the finding of Pueblo Alto has been interpreted as evidence that people blah, 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 blah. No, that's good. All right. We got everything. We're talking about the large amount of old material. Okay, the deposits, several broken pots. Special ceremonies, they use these pots, you know, during the festive meal and discarded the pots. Those are the notes you're going to take. On the left-hand side, it says, additionally, the instructor claims that the Chaco Great Houses were not used as ceremonial gathering places. Ooh, he explains that besides broken pots, specialists also build in materials as, also built, I'm sorry, also, no comma, built materials as sand, from sand, and stones and even construction materials. So I'm reiterating the correct, you're reading also comma building materials as sand, but I just said the correct, the, what you should or what she should have written down there, right? 
For these reasons, comma, the professor claims that even archaeologists, we could take away the comma, relative pronoun, that even archaeologists can suppose, suppose, that broken pots are related with special ceremonies, semicolon, the fact of having, the fact of having found other, the fact that they have found other materials could be more, that could have been more related to the great houses can be used as a normal space for trash. Okay, the grammar, we're gonna have to go back and reconstruct a couple of these sentences in the last paragraph. I saw that it was longer out of all of them. So that's why I'm like, hmm. Okay, let's see how we go about this. However, the reading states that these broken pots can be interpreted as evidence that inside the great houses, the inhabitants perform important, I wouldn't say important, but let's just say ceremonial gatherings, whereas they had broken the pots after blah, 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 right? So, <sighs> all right. Is there room for improvement? Yes. There's a lot of details I will go over with my student on, you know, you know, back and forth when we actually cover this during our little coaching session. But for the most part, let's see, by listening to this little Chaco Great House, what we can actually take away from everything in regards to the lecture. So again, I'm gonna put that there, put that there, put that there. For those of you who are listening, I am putting hyphens below each paragraph to write down very quickly the notes that I hear during the lecture. So again, we could finally see if she actually had put, you know, that, that she had actually written down the correct information, right? So with that being said, guys, here we go. We got the Chaco Great House in three, two, one. Unfortunately, none of the arguments about what the Chaco Great Houses were used for are very convincing. First, while the outside of the structures look like later apartment buildings, the inside of the Great Houses cast doubt on the idea of many people living there. If hundreds of people lived in the structure, then there would need to be several fireplaces for each family to do their daily cooking. However, there are only enough fireplaces for about 10 families. Yet there were enough rooms for more than 100 families, which suggests that the primary function of the houses were not residential. Second, the theory of the houses being storage buildings for the grain maze lacks evidence. While it may sound plausible for the large empty rooms to be used for storage, excavations of the great houses have not uncovered many traces of maize containers or maize. If they had been used for storage, then there should be more spilled maize on the floor and large containers. And finally, the use of the great houses as ceremonial centers has insufficient evidence as well. The mound at Pueblo Alto mentioned in the reading contained many other materials besides broken pots. Most of these materials were not what you would expect from ceremonies such as building materials, sands, stones, and even construction tools. This suggests the mound was more likely a trash heap of construction debris and normal trash, meaning it is not very strong evidence for a special ceremonies theory. Evidence uh, for a special ceremony theory. Okay, God, I hate my, you know what's so funny? When you're taking notes, it's actually easier to write it down when it comes to the, what is it? The IBT with the integrated task, because for some reason, my, my fingers, I get stuck in my thoughts and everything now. But if I had the like, pen to paper, I'm about brrr, very quickly. Nonetheless, here we go. First, outside, it looked like an apartment. Inside cast doubt to how many people actually live there, right? If there, if there were hunches of people, there would have to be several fireplaces, but only enough for about 10 families. So that specific theory, and again, I think, um, what did he say? Those architectural structures, those societies were... Uh, not very residential. 
is what he said. Those were the notes that I actually had taken down. And the second paragraph about the storage is, I kind of just ran all over the place with this, but it lacks evidence. Um, and because of that, you will, you would have seen more spilled maize on the floor and large containers. But because with the evidence, they, had, they hadn't uncovered that many maize containers. So those are the notes I had taken from that listening. And then, of course, the last one, which was all over the place, talks about, but most of the period materials were not expected, like sandstones and construction tools. These were all part of construction debris. And there's not much evidence behind for a special ceremony, or I'm sorry, a special ceremonial theory. No, uh, a special ceremony. There we go. That makes sense. So does that make sense? So now if we actually look back at the reading, let's look at it. I mean, what she had written down. Now, I think she said the several fireplaces. I think it says right here, the professor argues that the Chaco Great Houses only have the space uh, fireplace, uh, I'm sorry, fireplaces for 10 families. Is that what he said? 10 families or 10 people? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Damn it. I would have to go back. The point differs from the reading and it talks about hundreds of people. So for that, that simple fact right there is true. She did a very good job at, you know, again, like combining that information. So that was really, really good. Um, also would have been able to cook uh down on people it would have been uh yeah several fireplaces so the biggest th key thing there was definitely the fireplaces so that's why you got to go with that 60 to 40 method you got to put like 60 percent of what you hear but again what you hear is not going to be that much right so that's why there's no conclusion when it comes to the integrated task so again breaking that one down and going down to the next one another point lacks evidence sounds plausible but they have not uncovered made containers. While I was actually listening to this, I was thinking about what she had written and she didn't talk about any of that. So again, however, the reading states that yes, the teacher claims that if it were used as a storage construction, it would have needed large container spaces. Not necessarily spaces, but large containers, right? There would be more large containers. It would have... It, there would have been large containers, right? I think that's what she had meant to say. Um, also, the spilled maize is a specific detail that she did not mention inside of her little writing, which is crucial. That's what I had written down, okay? Now, going into the last phase. Additionally, the instructor claims that the Chaco Great Houses were not used as ceremonial guest gathering places, Broken pot specialists, all that good stuff. For these reasons, the professor claims that even archaeologists can, yeah, the, the grammar was everywhere, uh, can be used as a, nor as a normal space for trash. <sighs> the reading states that the broken pots, okay. Now, the thing is, the professor claims that, yeah, that broken pot, the, the, two, the, the construction, what she meant to say is the professor claims that the construction debris that was founded was, is not much evidence in regards to there being a special ceremony, right? It's just construction tools, sandstone, that's all used to construct these specific houses, right? That's what she had meant to say in that third sentence. Now, she put normal space for trash uh, I don't really see that. Unless I went past that, uh, what is it? Normal space for trash? Yeah, looking at it, broken pots. Yeah, I, I ran over everything. I don't see it here on the reading, uh, the reading portion of it. So does that make sense, people? So again, there's a lot of sentences that we'll have to go over and whatnot, you know, both my student and I. Uh, but for the most part, I hope that you guys really do understand that little aspect of you know how to take the notes i already went over that in the sea otters but in the chaco great house is the okay well we got the essay okay obviously the introduction not much problem we just have to reroute a couple of things i'm summing up everything now and then the first point okay first outside the people looking in several fireplaces got to make sure that the 10 families hundreds of people we have to make sure that information 
is right because I don't know if it's 10 families or 10 people, right? Several fireplaces, that, that's what I had written down. So I would have to go back, talk to her, listen again. Boom, you got it. Fantastic. That's what I would say to her. Obviously, not you. And then the second part, another point that the professor uses to cast out, okay? It, the teacher contain, uh, claims that it was used for storage spaces. Now, she meant to say that there would there would be more large containers, not container spaces. Okay? And also, there would be more spilled maize. That's the critical detail that she had left out of there. Right? So just a little detail, add that in, you can make it a heck of a lot better. As well as, you know, fixing up the grammar, which I do with her, like, off off this camera. And then, additionally, the instructor claims that the Chaco Great House was not used. Oh, I'm sorry, the Chaco Great Houses were not used as ceremonial gathering places. I mentioned that, obviously, the construction tools, I said, I think he said trashy. Uh, and these were more just construction debris, not much evidence of a special ceremonial theory, a special ceremony type of theory, right? So again, related with the ceremonies, fact of having found other materials can be more related to the great houses, can be used for normal space for trash. We would just have to redo that sentence right there so it can make more sense. And then again, construction debris, not normal trash, construction debris. We have to make sure that that is right there, front and centered. Huh. So, people, with that being said, there is still work to do with my student. I'm very excited, though, because, again, the structure is absolutely there, okay? The introduction, no problem. We're just going to reroute a couple of things. The first paragraph, decent, okay? Again, 10 families, several fireplaces. We'll have to re you know, do a couple of other things and whatnot. The second body paragraph is the one that we're going to have to focus on a little bit more because the spilled maize and, you know, again, she has a tendency of putting in information that wasn't necessarily in the listening or the reading. So that's something that we're going to have to clear up, right? And then in that last paragraph, like, you know, construction tools, Trashy, oh man, I, I'm not even exactly sure. I would have to go back and listen to it, but trash of construction debris, not much evidence like I've already repeated, like repeated four times already. That is what would have to be put in there. And also there was a lot of blah, 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 blah. Again, her, her structure, her linkers, how it flows, everything's good. We just have to get the information right, okay? Reduce the amount of grammatical errors and we'll be fine. So this is exactly what I do with my students. And I really wanted to cover this for you guys because, again, I know a lot of you are probably going through this, you know, this specific type of difficulty, you know, and this little thing that could be very, very difficult for a lot of people out there. So that's why I wanted to cover it on this specific video for you guys. So, again, if you guys are interested in this type of essay review and you guys already know that of course i have so many other videos out there please get in touch with me essay reviews will be climbing up in price at the beginning of the new year so make sure you get your essay review task there are bundles of four there are bundles of six there are bundles of eight even if you want the online coaching just to get on the call with me and all that stuff that is all available so for those of you listening to me in podcast form or video form i just want to say thank you so much Thank you to all of you out there who are listening to me. And guys, you guys better stay tuned for more. If there are other things in this specific video that I did not go over that you would like me to go over in the next video, you reach out to me. So with that being said, guys, stay tuned for more. Over and out.